go ahead and just get comfy because this is gonna be a long video, a lot of talking in this video. Even the dog is getting comfy right now. If you've clicked on this video, you're probably wondering why it's from my channel. If you've been subscribed to me for a long time, you're probably very confused, as am I. <laughs> and if you're new to my channel, I usually don't do videos like this. The type of videos that I usually make, the bread and butter of this channel, are usually art hack videos where I test out really ridiculous art hacks. So here we go. I do art historical videos where I test out really old art supplies. I test out really weird and expensive and unique art supplies that you've probably never heard of. The main focus of those videos are usually surrounded by products and themes. But for today's video, I wanna get more personal with you guys. I wanna show you who Ray Dizzle the artist is. I know for me personally, whenever I watch YouTube, I really enjoy hearing other people's opinions, hearing people's takes on things. I love learning, getting new perspectives. I may or may not love getting a little tea. I've been wanting to make this video for a while. I just haven't, I don't know, just haven't been brave enough, I guess. I feel kind of like a lawyer in the court of law and I'm about to present my case to everybody. <laughs> but yeah, today for the first time on my channel, I am going to share my unpopular art opinions. And before this video begins, if you have an unpopular opinion, uh, put it in the comments down below. I will be responding to a lot. And I also wanna emphasize before this video starts that I'm not, I'm not good at words at all. I can hardly speak half the time. So at some point in this video, I'm sure I'm gonna say something slightly wrong or incorrectly. And if I do feel any need to explain myself further, I'll put it in the comments. Like I said, I'm terrible when it comes to like talking. So, so yeah, with that being said, let's start. Okay, I got my list ready. First unpopular opinion. Copic markers are not the end all be all perfect marker. We're starting off hot. Are Copic markers one of the best art supplies? Absolutely, yes. I 100% agree with that sentiment. But I don't think in a lot of scenarios that they're the end all be all marker choice for everybody. Copic markers are very, very expensive. And anybody who's ever worked with alcohol-based markers knows that it adds up very quickly. Each individual marker can range anywhere from like $6 all the way up to $8. And unlike paint, where you can just like mix two colors together, that's not really the case when it comes to markers. And when I say they're not perfect for everybody in every situation, I'll give an example. I know for myself and a lot of other illustrators out there, when you do illustrations, there is a lot of color blocking involved. And I'll show some examples of just like a pure solid block. And in that scenario, if you're just gonna be doing like a solid application of one color, you don't need to mix, you don't need to blend, you just need a solid line. When it comes to drawing techniques like that, I personally would reach for a much cheaper marker like an Ohuhu. For me personally, I'm going to get the exact result that I need, which is a solid blank of color, but I'm not using my $8 marker, my whole paycheck. <laughs> So in my opinion, are Copics amazing? Yes, 100% we stand, but are they the perfect marker for every single scenario for everybody? I'm gonna have to say, in my opinion, I don't think so. My next unpopular opinion, if you are an artist, you don't have to pursue art as a career. A lot of us growing up who had talents or natural inclinations to things, like for example, if you're good at sports, what is the first thing you hear growing up? Oh, you should get into football. Or if you're good at dancing, oh, you should get into ballet. And of course, if you're good at drawing, what is the first thing people always say? Oh, you should become an artist. Or you'll hear another compliment of, with your talent, you can make a lot of money. Another one that I've heard many times is, they're such a good artist, it's a shame they never pursued it any further. And I understand the sentiments behind those, but hear me out. I've ran into artists who, if they wanted to, they could probably become the next Pablo Picasso. But a lot of artists don't want that lifestyle. They hold their artwork and their whole entire process so near and dear to their heart. They don't care if it gets sold in a gallery for a million dollars. They don't care if a million people buy their artwork or see their artwork. They just like doing it because they like doing it. And I don't think that that should be considered a waste of talent. Some people do artwork just because they like the process of it, just because it's an escape from the world for a little bit. Some people's personalities, they would rather have like the stability of a nine to five job and come home and do art work for fun. Being a self-employed artist is very, very tough. It doesn't come with a lot of traditional stability that you would find with a nine to five job. Being a self-employed artist or musician or whatever, it really can add a lot of anxiety, pressure, am I good enough, art block. And a lot of people don't wanna mix their creative life with their work life. If somebody chooses to do that route, I respect it. And even in some ways, I envy it. What mood are we feeling? What mood are we feeling? We'll do red because this next one is so controversial. <laughs> In fact, I asked on my Twitter what you guys thought was like the most controversial art opinion you guys had, and I saw this one quite a lot. In fact, let me get comfy for this one. In my opinion, paint pouring can require an immense amount of skill. Now, whenever you first hear the definition of paint pouring, it sounds very simplistic. You put paint in a cup and you pour it over canvas. And you'll see lots of YouTube channels that are dedicated to the artwork. You'll see them sold for lots of money. And if you were to... 
probably a scam. I get like scams every day. Yeah, it was a scam. But anyway, as I was saying, if you were to boil down to just the bones of paint pouring, it seems that anyone essentially could, in theory, do it. But in my opinion, I definitely think that it ranges. The best way that I can put it is like cooking. Yes, everybody essentially can go and make a grilled cheese, but not everybody can create like a Gordon Ramsay style five-star meal. It requires lots of time, patience, understanding, and I feel like it's the exact same thing with paint pouring. This is kind of hard for me to admit because I try to be very very like open about everything. Around January of this year, I did what I thought was gonna be a super easy video, which was the weirdest paint pouring techniques out there. I thought you just pour paint in a canvas and dump it and that's it. But quickly I learned when I started to film that video, paint pouring is so difficult, especially for like the more advanced techniques. You have to understand like the fluidity and motion of the paint. You have to understand color theory and how they're all gonna melt together. It's very difficult to flip it just right and super quickly. It's insanely difficult to manipulate the paint and get a very specific symmetrical pattern. Whenever you're actually pouring the paint with a cup like this, you have to have exact precision to not just like pour it too much or too little. You have to be so incredibly precise. Then on top of that, the painting actually spreads out as it dries. You add in glitter, silicone, fire. They're crazy. Like upper level paint pouring, in my opinion, is so difficult and requires so much time, patience, and understanding. Doing that video where I tested out paint pouring changed my whole entire perspective completely. All right, what do we got next? Ooh, for this next one, I definitely know I might be ruffling some feathers with this one. My opinion is that I believe photorealism is art. Now, before I even get into this topic, I just want to say art is 100% completely, completely subjective. That's the cool thing about artwork is that every single person can feel completely different about one singular thing. When you look at the definition of art, primarily the sentence I want to focus on is producing works to be appreciated primarily for their beauty or emotional power. When it comes to realism, I think it is the simplest and easiest way to show off your skill and beauty with artwork. When I was a little kid, me and my dad used to go to a museum in my local town called the Anderson Museum of Modern Art or contemporary art. And as a little kid, I had no concept of modern art and what it meant. There was one artwork specifically. It was like a black circle made out of wax. And as a little kid, I had zero concept of the meaning behind it, the emotional power behind it, the work involved in creating it. I had no idea. But what I did comprehend was the extremely photorealistic paintings. And that includes realism taken directly from a reference. As somebody who didn't understand art in deeper concepts at the time, it absolutely blew me away way to see these realistic drawings, these paintings. They left me in such a deep awe that I myself started wanting to draw and paint and like understand how, how could a human create that out of this? So when it does come down to the definition of art, for me personally, it definitely hits the requirements of skill and to be appreciated for their beauty. And of course, in my case as a little kid, it's emotional power. So yeah, I definitely feel that photorealism is one of the easiest artworks to understand, be appreciated by the masses. For me personally, realism definitely was the gateway drug into artwork. But on the flip side, I completely understand the argument of there's no imagination when it comes to photorealism. I do think it's very subjective, especially if you're going to compare it to very conceptual artwork. I completely understand both points, but in my heart, I hold a very special place for photorealism and I do consider it artwork. Before we get to the absolute huge one that I think was causing a major war on my Twitter, as a pretense, I'm going to go with a lighter one. And that's the opinion that microns are overrated. If you don't know what microns are, they're a very popular fine liner, and I would say they're pretty much a staple in the art community. And I'm not gonna lie, they are good pens. The art scene now is much different than it- Someone- is there a serial killer? I'm definitely gonna sound like such an old lady, but 10, 15 years ago, it was much harder to find like specialty art supplies. I mean, back before the internet had everything available right off the bat, it was quite hard to find. And therefore your selection was much lower back in the day. And so back in the day, microns definitely were the end all be all of fine liners. But now in modern day, it's so easy to find a good fine liner, no problem. You can get them on Wish and AliExpress. Even Walmart sells some very 
decent fine liners. Now, I do have to say that Microns are archival, meaning that the ink will last a very long time. Unlike a lot of paints that have very unstable pigments, a lot of inks tend to be very, very stable. Unless you're very, very, very focused on archival work, I definitely feel that you can get a better set of fine liner pens much cheaper other places, and they don't have to be the name brand Microns. And this leads us to probably the most controversial opinion of all. On Twitter, when I asked about what your guys' opinion was on it, probably like every third comment was regarding this. Let me take a breath. <sighs> Modern art, I think, is very... I'm scared to say it. Okay, here we go. Modern art does take a lot of skill. Now, like I said, this video is opinions, not facts. <laughs> What falls under the category of modern art are artists like Jackson Pollock and Mark Rothko. Now, when it comes to modern art, I definitely understand how easy it is to look at a painting and say like, I could do that, no problem. But when it comes to that type of modern art, there really is a lot of like symbolism behind it, a lot of tactfulness behind it, a lot of understanding of the artist's story, what they meant, just tons and tons of symbolism behind it. The best example that I could say is look at Pablo Picasso. He started off originally as a realistic artist. And one of the many reasons that he was held to such a high esteem, even though he could do and create realistic art, he completely rejected that form and moved on to a more abstract way of painting, which was the Cubist movement. And even now in modern day, when you walk into a contemporary art museum, there's usually a thing called an artist statement where it explains what you're looking at, what it means, what the artist was trying to create. And that's the cool thing about artwork is that it has no rules and the rules that it does have are made to be broken. And that's how artwork and new ideas are made is from other artists past, rejecting old ideas, trying new things. And when you factor in the symbolism, the story behind it, the meaning behind it, I do think you can get a lot of enjoyment from contemporary and abstract artwork. So yeah, I definitely say that next time you go to like a modern museum, check out the artists, read about what they were trying to do, and I think it'll be pretty cool to get like a new perspective of what the painting means. Oh, so anyway, that was a lot of talking. I know you guys only saw however long this video is, but I talked. I talked so much that my throat at one point just gave up. And with that being said, that is some of my unpopular art opinion. If you have an unpopular opinion, I would love to hear it. I would love to respond to it. I will definitely be in the comments down below. If you would like to see part two of this, please let me know. If you haven't subbed with notifications, please be sure to do that. And yeah, with that being said, I hope you have a good day and I will see you next video. Bye.